Profile picture, which is better than mine, by the way. So you're gonna have to change that. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh there we go. There we go. Oh, yeah. What's up, guys? What's up, man? Well, what are you doing? I uh, just got back from the range. Uh, nice. We're having some. Uh, somebody brought tacos. So actually, somebody brought like a can <laughs> for Labor Day. There, you know, uh, uh, some tortillas in there, and so so we shot a little bit in the beginning, and then we brought beer and tacos. So nice. Pretty good dad's range, I'd say. All right, everybody. Welcome to another episode of On the Range Podcast, brought to you by Warhog Tactical and Kelly Defense. As always, I'm with my co-host, Rick. How's it going, buddy? It's going, man. How you doing, Mark? I'm doing well, my friend. It's another special day here on On the Range. Uh, why don't you go ahead and introduce our very special guest? I'm yeah. looking forward to getting him on. <laughs> yeah, buddy. So we got, hey guys, so we got Chris Alvarez on here. Uh, I'm not going to steal all of his thunder. I'll let him tell you a little bit about himself, but... Uh, He's one of the instructors over at Green Ops. So if you guys, uh, what was it, episode 16, I think it was Mike Green we had on there. Oh, what a great um, show. Do go check that yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, buddy. But again, flag, it's all important. But anyway, not to steal Chris's, not to steal Chris's thunder, but um, yeah, man, just want to, uh, gl- Chris, glad you're on. And just a quick uh, intro, Chris, if you wouldn't mind, just kind of tell the viewers, listeners a little bit about yourself. All right. Um, hey, guys, I'm Chris Alvarez. I'm a uh, instructor for Green Ops. I am a 20-year retired United States Army Master Sergeant, spent time in 82nd on the 1st, 7th Special Forces Group, and the Long Range Surveillance Company. Retired in 2016, went to school, been doing the Green Ops instructor thing, and it's been really, really, really good. Um, <clears throat> five time, I think six times tactical games athlete competitor. I place third or top five usually, or sometimes top 10, but it's up there in the elite. Well, it's in the elite, so you know we have a lot of competitors. You, you know the deal. So, oh yeah, oh, yeah. competition <laughs> is getting fierce, and we can talk about that later on. And but uh, but yeah, for me, placed it even top five. We got guys um, from Fort Bragg when we went to the uh, TRC, and mm-hmm. there were guys from the unit there, and those guys were up there. So for me to be in in that general vicinity as a retiree. And yeah, man. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? That's, I'm pretty good with that. I got nothing to prove. So, yeah. So, on that, how's the leg doing? It's better. So, I've yeah. been walking on it for like two days now. So, okay. it's a lot better. Went to the range. I put some videos from the range today on Instagram. People yeah. like them, you know, from the holster and from concealment. And so, other than that, I can't run and gun, but, I, but I'm signed up for a two gun match in two weeks. So, we'll see. Yeah. Are we live, mm-hmm. by the way, or are we just shooting the stairs? Um, yeah. <laughs> if it sounds good, we'll be live. Yeah. If it sounds horrible, then we're just shooting the it, crap. So we're, right. we're, recording, <laughs> we're recording right now. So typically, the way we do it, Chris, is just, hey, man, hit the record button. Just kind of BS, you know, for a couple. We'll give people, hey, if you want to give them a quick intro on who you are and what's up, man. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> you know, if you don't no, want to say anything that's not politically correct, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll be play, I'm, I'm pretty. I'm pretty savvy on that. Uh, you know, I don't. I don't mention politics at all. But uh, yeah. like, do I like them? My whiskey, damn right, I like my whiskey. <laughs> After a good day at the range. Hey, what kind? You, what kind are you drinking? Uh, Maker's Mark right now. It's oh cheap. yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, it's not cheap, but it's you know, it's not. It's a uh, solid. Yeah. It's a solid, man. It's a staple. Take, I think it's a staple, man. Dude, if know. you Go if ahead. you can get a hold of any uh, Teutonic, mm-hmm. man, they've got some smoke and bourbon. Um, my buddy, he's connected to Hoot. Mm-hmm. He's got the company that whiskey, he's got a whiskey called Hooten and Young, and I think he's mm-hmm. got cigars. And apparently that, that whiskey is phenomenal. My buddy, he's like, you better fucking buy it. I'm sorry. You better no, you're buy good. it. Oh, okay. You better buy yeah. that whiskey. What kind of whiskey do you drink? Like he checks me out. He's a, he's a 375 guy. I'm retired. Yeah. And he, he's out here. Like he's always having me. <laughs> But man, it's like 100, 150 bucks. I would have to only pull that out for the, you know, for 
precise. Damn. Moment. 150 like, bucks for the bottle? Yeah. I'm like, I wonder who the signature was like, hey, this is my safety, sir. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't even touch that bottle in the bottle just sit right there, you know man nice but he can't he can't give me those guarantees so um i haven't bought the bottle yet well yeah. i can't blame him man it's 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 tonic. to tonic yeah okay nice yes see if you can track some down man if not next time we're around i'll bust some out man that is i'm and telling you it, it it's a bold statement to say but i'll say it it's the best bourbon I've really? had. Where, where are they based oh, yeah. out of? Are they in the US? New York? Yeah, U.S. Okay. Yeah, they're out of New, out of New York. Okay, yeah, because bourbon is usually reserved like here. That's a U.S. thing. That's not a, I don't think that's an international thing. I think that's a U.S. thing. Bourbon. Bourbon, yes. When it when it comes to whiskey, yeah. whiskey's an international. Gotcha. I know so, there's something yeah. like that. Like, yeah. I'm becoming a snob. Hey. Mm -hmm. uh, Nothing here. like now. I'm just a snot. Like the Guinness Brewery is like ten minutes away from my house, mm -hmm. and so. The, well, so, technically, Guinness Guinness the the actual brewery is in Ireland, but it's yeah. a little more than ten minutes. But that's no, okay. no, no, no. I I know that, but they have, <laughs> the only one in the U.S. The only one in the U.S. is here in Baltimore. There's so only, there's only one you, here in the U.S. And they bring the ingredients. The ingredients do come from Ireland. Uh -huh. but they make it here and there's one that they actually make here with stuff it's called the the guinness blonde check it out okay yeah do they do uh tours there yes they do they do tours man and it was constantly changing the the beer profiles and whatever beer like there's a couple of staples there like the stouts and the uh mm -hmm. there's one that i really love it's 12 bucks like for for eight ounces or eight or ten ounces it's called Imperial Stout, and it's aged in whiskey barrels. So you can smell the whiskey, yep. like, on the beer, but it's so – It's you so can good. Taste it. It's so good, man. But yep. it's, like, 12% ABVs. So yep. one be like, two of those, you're already, like, you're already, you know, <laughs> you're drunk. So. Nice. So you've done the tour there? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's, like, in between, like, it's literally, like – my school's 10 minutes and it's halfway in between me and my school. So like when nice. friends come over, like when friends come over from like, like Jason Kelly or like if you would like I say, if you would come, if you guys would come over to my house, I'd probably, chances are we're going to go hit the brewery and have a good beer because they, they have a really nice campus and it's super nice out there. That's cool. Yeah. Well, when you're as busy as you guys are, you make all that big coin. You can afford to be a snob. <laughs> Look, man, I only because I'm retired. You know the deal. But and all, all my kids are old. Well, I got one that he's still in the house, but the rest of my kids are all old. So that's um, it, man. Re retired on a fixed income. Come on, man. Dude, anything else is chair like I no bills. Like I paid off all my bills when I when I retired. I got a lump sum for 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 disability. I got like I think like thirty or forty grand, man. Like, nice. I just looked at my bank account. I was like, holy crap. I don't think this is right. <laughs> and then after that, man, dude, I cleaned out all of my bills so I can just live. That's like, it, man. It five. That's it, man. That's really it. Nice. So, well, I learned, I have a great mentor. His name was Rick Hogg. And <laughs> and I were coming out from, um, from whatever bombing range, Avon Park bombing range. And we had dinner yep. and we had a beer. And we're like, hey, man, you got you to gotta put your name on something. You got to have a lot of, you know, Irons in the fire, so I'm taking the advice that you've given me, and I'm actually putting it to good use. Yeah, buddy. It, it, like I said, man, it's all just figuring stuff out, and unfortunately, there's no entrepreneur's handbook out there. So it's kind of getting that, like I said, whether it's mentorship, friendship, just chat and going, hey, don't do this, because this is the lesson I learned. Yeah. Try to streamline, because the less mistakes you have, or the less that you have to learn the hard way, man, the more easier it is that you can actually focus towards whatever task you're looking to do. So, I mean, you know, you got the green op stuff going on, you got the strength and conditioning, plus your regular, you know, fitness shooting stuff going on. And I know yeah. you're going to school. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, I like to stay old. busy like that though. I don't, I like the, I like the up tempo to be pretty fast because I guess that's what I'm used to. And man, I, I live by myself, so I can't just be here. I gotta be sure. all over the place. I gotta be, my mind is just, it just runs really wild and if it doesn't if i don't give it tasks to start doing things then it just yeah i go crazy but but, uh, but it, here's just kind of a word of advice right so on the entrepreneurial side just make mm -hmm. sure i know 
you know, you're running thousand miles an hour. You've yeah. got to sit down. You got to have those pause points yes. every once in a while. Yes. We kind of put pen to paper, go, Hey, where are we at? Where are we going? And then don't forget, just plug some self time in for you where it's like, Hey man, shut all that crap off because that's a problem I still face, you know, today between the wife, I was going, Hey, are we going to do this? And if, yeah. you know, if you're waiting for that West coast phone call to come in, it may be five o'clock their time winds up being eight o'clock your time. I've got to grab it. Cause I'm waiting for this thing to go on. It's just, mm -hmm. just a, you know, word of caution, figure out that balance because yeah. if not, man, you can go 24 seven. Well, I've been burned out a couple of times. I'm not going to lie. And uh, like working for Greenhouse, like, man, there was, there's, there's months that I'm like every weekend I'm at the range of like, you know, burnt out, you know, <laughs> and then I'll take like a week or two to reset and then I'm, you know, back again. But there's yeah. times where I've actually gotten burnt out from going through the range so much, you know, which I never thought, you know, that could even happen. But, you know, it's happened to me a couple of times. But think about it, brother. You got four hours on the road, just coming mm -hmm. and going. And I don't know whether you're staying local or if you're commuting back and forth. I'm commuting. Usually commuting. You know, if it's a two day course and I'll stay out there, but yeah, you know, but that's still, I mean, that's time right there. And then it's just, how do you maximize the time in the car? Yeah. Whether it's, you know, try to get yourself smarter, make the phone calls you need to, whatever the case may be, yeah. but it, it's always trying to maximize that downtime to go, Hey, so now when I get home, I can decompress, get my stuff straight for the next day or whatever you're doing. Yeah. Pick it up and go from there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. I was going to say something else, but yeah. Uh, oh, school. So I'm right now, you know, school, the semester just started. I'm taking a couple classes that are super into what I'm trying to accomplish. So that kind of works out. One of the classes that I'm even taking was English 393. And the first project that we had to do was about your dream job. And I'm like, oh man, this is pretty easy, you know, because I'm not some 21 year old kid that's like, hasn't even figured it out. I know exactly what I want to do. And so that kind of gave me a little bit more vision, like looking forward ahead, like, hey, what does Chris Alvarez want to do post greenhouse? Like where, where is this headed to? So I don't want to just stay in that position for the rest of my life. I want to eventually grow out of it and have my own company, which I already have a, a separate company for different reasons, but at least it's there. So the moment that I feel that I can be on my own, I can just go ahead in that company and just start working with it and, and building and growing it. Yeah, dude. And, and that's where the beast is at. I mean, Mark will tell you when you take that step, you know, if you want to say that leap of faith, dude, there is so much stuff, you know, do you got the website hooked up? Do you got the e-commerce, you know, do you got the network established? And you're yeah. trying to sit there and figure all this stuff out. What are your relationships? You know, all these different things that go into it. You know, yeah, you've got the business straight. You got a CPA? Yes, I do. I do. Now okay. I do. Like I put yeah. actually I bought a brand new truck, put that on my company name. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, so I can claim everything at the end of the year. All oh, my dude. tolls, my gas, my ammo, my guns. It's all going in. It's all my company name. So hey, have a chat with your CPA. Your mileage might be a better way to go than gas. Yeah, that's so, what I'm saying. I'm sorry. Not the yeah. gas, the, the mileage. No, no. I, I, yep. Yeah. Yeah. It is the mileage. Yeah. The gas. You know, all that stuff, man. It's I'm telling you, man, it's a beast. It's a 24 well, seven. You, you're lucky because you're you're married to a CPA. So that works out for you. Well, she's an accountant. She's not a CPA. Okay. So she, well, she's an yeah. accountant, though. She's, yeah. she, 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 she keeps she my book straight. You know, but man, all the other backside stuff, it's, uh, yeah. it's, it's a pain, man. Yeah. 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 So, uh, so I, I saw you, man, you've been, uh, you've been, you know, training out there in the West coast, like yep. hey, what's going on over there, man. How's that working out? Dude. I mean, California was good. We wound up, uh, we did three days at Academy and then we wound up doing, uh, I did, which, which the, which place, the LA, the LAPD Academy or. No, no. So Academy is part of Constellus Group. So they've got oh, a I'm West sorry. Coast. I'm sorry. Yeah, yes, yeah. Academy. The, what used to be Blackwater. Yes. Yeah. I, I didn't yep. know if like the police academy. Yeah. No, no, no. No. So we did uh, three days out there. We did a one day low light and then we did a two day Warhog pistol. Oh, nice. Uh, had a break in there. Had to run out to uh, Nevada, do some stuff with uh, Archon, then came back. I had a uh, two day private class out at um, South Bay, which is a, you know, private Sure. I say private, but it's a, just a gun range out there. So yeah, did that and 
just came back from Connecticut, you know, ran some stuff up there. So yeah, dude, we're trying to get stuff going, but dude, this ammo is absolutely oh, know, crushing man. right now. It's yeah, that's a killer. It's a killer. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it's um, looking at, especially, you know, cause there wasn't a lot of pull, like I said, for me doing uh, rifle stuff now. I mean, dude, it almost a buck around. That's like a soul crusher. So oh, yeah. trying to figure out, Hey, how to retweak, you know, the class a little bit bring the you know round count down a little bit little more time spent on dry yeah. fire mm -hmm. and then um trying to get up with these ammo manufacturers not the distributors but trying to find yeah. some manufacturers that will kind of get behind us i don't want to get in the ammo business but it's almost to a point where you're gonna have man, to get into it a, a little bit yeah. yeah so yeah i'm feeling that pain too like i'm feeling all that pain the the ammo's expensive um so even today, I just, I usually don't even care how much I shoot, usually. <laughs> <laughs> but today I did. I pulled out like four boxes of 50 mm -hmm. laser ammo, yeah. 124. Um, and I just, I allotted that. So it was what, 200 rounds? That's it, you know. But I try to make <laughs> drills where they're single shots so I can get the most, the most amount of drills. So a lot of, you know, web, you know from, the, from the draw, one reload one or from concealment too. So concealment, I don't practice concealment that much, but it's good to go out there, and, you know, first the cobwebs off a little bit. Put a couple no shoots between you and the target. I mean, you can add all kinds of stuff to really yes. ramp that up because that's reality. And you, and so. the cool part that if you're even like a, an instructor and you tell him, like a student would be able to visualize him going into and just getting into it, which made things a lot easier as a student because you're actually thinking that you're at Walmart and next thing you know there's a fucking active shooter and you got to drop back yeah put rounds on target so that's pretty and cool yeah you you would be surprised the things you see when you have people occupy their hands dude it's hey, like, that's a trigger time tv like show segment right there like hey there what do you do at Walmart when you're yeah. where you're carrying like you know 10 different bags 10 grocery bags or or I think you check out it's chapter, I think it's 27. I could be wrong on uh, the make ready with uh, Warhog tactical concealed okay. carry, you know? <laughs> very you know, I, I tell people, go, I'm sorry, Mark, go ahead. <laughs> no, very nicely done. No. Shameless Mark, plug right Mark there. Mark, yeah, shame, shameless plug. <laughs> um, it's funny because now, you know, I can say, hey, my buddy Rick, yeah, he's in Pantio. Like, I, I use you, Rick. I'm just, I use your no. credibility, man. Just throwing hey. it out there. <laughs> but that's but see here's here's the thing chris right and you bring up a great point because this is something we don't do collectively well we don't help promote each other yeah so and i hate to say it but i'll use the navy as an example they seem to really have that brotherhood better hooked up where they're all kind of helping each other out where we really don't do i think the best job that we could i think we're starting to get a little better Yes. In some certain in some certain niches, but how do we collectively hey promote Chris, promote Green Ops, promote whoever? That's true. You know, and because the thing is, I think a lot of people think, well, you know, Chris is in the firearms business. I'm in the firearms business, dude. There's enough work for everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, so there's no reason not to. Hey, man, I'm not up in the Virginia area. You are. Boom. Go hit these guys up. Get a class. Yeah. So, yeah, same, same with us. Like, you know, we tell people, even in the Northern Virginia area, there's FPF Tactical, which is a guy named John Murphy, which I haven't even known. There's a couple of different instructors in the area. We tell students like, hey, don't take our work for us. You know, just go ahead and go seek training with these guys. Too. They're pretty good. You know what I'm saying? And then you can evaluate. But we, we, we're we always trying to help each other out, you know. Um, there's something well, especially. Yeah, especially the, S especially the SF brothers, man. You know, that's something I don't think we collectively mm -hmm. do that good of a job at. You know, so we, we, we're, because we eat our own, that's why. Well, we, we do. We do, but we shouldn't. We shouldn't. Yeah. Yes. Yes, we shouldn't. But yeah, those I Navy guys, man, they're, they're a marketing machine. They're constantly out there. Um, seems like they all know each other. So oh, yeah. anytime that they can you know, jump on board, they're always inviting each other. Now, Rick and I have done a pretty good job and along with you, Chris and Mike and, you know, all the ATAX guys and, and that community yeah. is kind of small, but I think, you know, the uh, relationship that we've all had has, has benefited me 
and I think it's benefited the show just having guys like yourself on. So I think you're right. I think we are getting a little bit better at it, but we can certainly do more, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I don't, you know, and I would love to bring you guys up, you know, one day, like, hey, I got, we, we're constantly bringing other people. Um, just so you know, uh, Mike, I don't know if you guys know who Steve Anderson is. Are you guys familiar with Steve Anderson? No. All right, give me a little more, little more details. I know a bunch of Steve Anderson, so. <clears throat> so he wrote this book that I have here, and it's the uh, Dry Fire book. Steve Anderson is a civilian. He's not a military guy. Mm -hmm. He wrote this book called Refinement and Repetition. And inside okay. of here, it's got all the drills, all the USPSA drills. Um, he's got, he's a dry fire monster, is basically mm -hmm. what he is. He made, he's a civilian, I think he made Grand Mastery in less than a year just doing these things every year. Sure. So Mike hired him. Um, but, you know, we constantly bring instructors up to host. You know, we host them. Like, mm -hmm. we can host you, we can host you, Mark. Um, we posted um, a Scott Jitlinski. I don't know if you guys know who he is. He's the uh, Modern Samurai Project. Mm -hmm. He's the Red Dot Master right now in the uh, in the in the, in the Red Dot community. Uh, but uh, yeah, we host a couple of guys. so we're really flexible. You know, we don't mind sharing the microphone, so to speak. You know, um, because the more instructors that we bring in, you know, the the variety of different training, like your training style, differs from mine. So. There's something to to gain by you know or maybe I'm missing something that you're not you know, that you're teaching. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, and we've done some stuff together in the past, but we need to better hone that, um, you know, at some point. So I, I would love to, man. I would love to like get back and then just like, hey, man, like maybe some instructor development. And I, I, man, I, I admire you, man. I respect the crap out of you. You know, I, I feel like you're one of my mentors. To be honest with you. You know, um, I, Thanks, really, brother. I really yeah. do. You're, you know, you're kind of like my older brother. And so you give me good advice and you're, you're pretty, you're pretty blunt about it. Even if it's, if you have to say shitty news, like, Hey man, I'm trying to tell you, man, but you're all fucked up. Chris. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, think about it. That's the way you, you want it, like, right? I love you, man, but you're all fucked up. Chris. Yeah. I don't, I don't think I throw you that. I love you, man. No, I think no, I just no, say, no. Hey Chris, check it out. Yeah. I, 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 I would, I would throw a check it out, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be spitting beer on the screen. <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, no, I, I definitely, you know, I think we need to like link up, Rick, and uh, yeah. you know, man, I would love to come one of your classes, even one of yours, Mark. You know, oh, yeah. just to just be hang around there, man. I wish I can, but or I wish I could. So, but you, you, you predominantly teach where up north. I'm sorry. Are you based out of like North, like New Hampshire, that area right there? No, it's Midwest for me. Yeah, Midwest, okay. Ohio, Indiana, okay, Kentucky. Yeah. And, okay, so you're really not too. I mean, Ohio is a couple hours from here, but yeah, you know, but it's still okay. So that's not bad. I yeah, first, we, we've been trying to. You guys were in. Yeah, Rick Europe and I've been trying to crack this Midwest nut for a while, and it's it's been uh, it's been Dude. difficult. Um, Brutal. It's it's kind of a strange strange thing, and most of the uh, issues that we have have been with. Uh, range owners, um, that kind of thing. And it's been a little cutthroat up here, but you know, we got a class coming up uh, this month. So hopefully that'll, you know, get the ball rolling. But again, that uh, ammo monster is really biting us, really yeah. biting us hard. Yeah. Yeah. yeah um, like I said, we're all suffering from it Hell right yeah. now. You know, everybody's scrounging, trying to find primers, or I think the there's powder, I think there's brass, there's plenty of brass, there's, but I think the primers is the, the main thing that's it's now, right? Is that, is that yeah, correct? Yeah, yeah. So that seems to be the, the big factor. Don't know where the, uh, the primer monster went to. I mean, you know, what is a primer? What, what really is it? Why can't, why are we not manufacturing that here in the US? Is that, is it coming from China? Is that what it is? Or like, what is no, it? I mean, made I, think, I think we manufacture here in the US, but I think the problem is when you look at it, Look at some of your ammo. So, for example, um, PMC, right? So, mm -hmm. if you look at the box, I guarantee it probably says made in Korea. Oh. So, you'd be surprised where, yes, you think you've got U.S. manufactured ammo. Yeah. It's, it's really not. I mean, it's yeah. manufactured. Look at the box. Yeah, so, yeah, next, yeah, time yeah. You're, next time you're looking at some of your stuff, just take a peruse, and you'd be surprised, man. Well, I bet. Um, There's, I know Aguila's made in Mexico. <laughs> what is? Aguila. Oh yeah? Yeah. All right. 
<laughs> made in Mexico. Hey, yeah. get some ends. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully. I wish I did, but um, but yeah, man. Um, but like I said, well, let me let me flip it out on another, another subject. So just got hired um <clears throat> do the want to promote this. Um, just got hired for um being a coach or a trainer for the tactical strength and conditioning um class that we're gonna do in our gym. Um so it's myself as a coach and then the programmer is also a, a prior army dude that's mm -hmm. um that's now a personal trainer um it's going through the uh, firefighter uh academy um, oh, nice yeah and so he's programming a lot of the stuff and i'm just going to be there coaching it and just kind of validating and just throwing my my little twist in it so it's at chiseled and chiseled is in um columbia maryland it's a nice area of maryland uh, maybe about 25 minutes away from um, from Baltimore, but now they yeah, have a website. Does that chisel uh, have a uh, website? Let me actually let me double check right now. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Yeah, we'll, we'll throw that up there. Yeah, hey, all you guys um, watching us on uh, YouTube, uh, hammer that like button, hit that bell notification bell, and also subscribe. You can find us at uh, Warhog Tactical and Kelly Defense. Also, uh, you can find us on the Range Podcast on IG. Warhog Tactical and Kelly Defense as well on IG. Hit us up, DM us. So, um, yeah, we were just talking about the ch uh, chiseled. Chiseled, that, yeah, that's, that's, the, the, that's the gym that's hosting it. Yes, yeah, so that's the gym that's hosting it. He, uh, his main objective is to cater to military. There's a lot of military around here. The uh, NSA is around here. Mm -hmm. um, Fort Meade is around here. So there's a lot of some, <laughs> some army bases, and then obviously law enforcement officers. So we want to get our, our our guys that are active duty in good shape. We don't want to break them. Just like just like yeah. uh, Pat Max says, it's not brokenness, it's fitness. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> we don't want to break. And so a lot of people see me and they just automatically think that I'm going to go ranger school, ranger or, or eye on them and just go like yell on them and make them do and it's not. No. Hey, here's something to think about. Do you know Tim over at uh, Counter Response over in Virginia? Tim, what? What's the last name? Um, uh, I think it's um, Hobble. Nope. Okay. Anyway, and I could be butchering Tim's last name. Okay. Um, and that's probably my TBI kicking in to go. All right. Uh, of course, you'd ask me people's last name. Anyway, something Tim's looking to do, and and just food for thought. So you've seen kind of some of my airsoft stuff yes. using the electronic target and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Tim's actually trying to get that incorporated in the gym. So oh, now what a great idea. So, yeah. So now if you're looking to take your tactical fitness kind of to the next level, granted segment, a little place, if, if it works for that space, I don't know the space of the gym, but you could incorporate airsoft on these electronic targets. So now you can actually give them, you know, whatever the little fitness routine, Hey, versus sitting there taking a break, you know, sipping on some cool water, uh, -uh. go over there and get you, you know, X amount of shots on uh, the gun power target, you know? So again, it's, it's working a whole piece where yes, you're looking at tactical or functional fitness, but now you can also incorporate, especially for your LEOs and stuff like that, you know, your firearms portion in there as well. So just food yeah. for thought. No, that's something that for sure I've definitely thought about. <laughs> it's, I think the, the secret's not out, Rick, about dry firing and about all the magical things you can mm -hmm. do with dry firing. Because I ask well, cops all the time, it's like, hey, do you drive for her? What is nope. that? Yeah. Nope. No, they're they, like, what is that? Yeah. No, I know. I know. Yeah. I, dude, if I could tell you the number of cops that I've talked to, and I'm like, hey, guys, check it out. Before you strap that belt on, if it's me, my last PCI, if you want to say, mm -hmm. is I'm, I'm going to take five minutes before I roll out the door, you know, make sure my gun is cleared, and I'm going to conduct some dry fire training. Because you would be, you'd be surprised. I've had LEOs come out in the range. And again, Mark, nothing against oh, LEOs. No, no. But especially on the triple Mark's retention safari. Yeah, <laughs> that he is, man. <laughs> um, but especially on those Safari Land triple retentions that have that little thumb, and the I don't know the, the official, hood, yes. but not the hood. The hood, no, I'm it's fine got with. Everything. It's got like, it's got every it, safety feature. Right. But especially that plastic thing that's like right by the hood. Yes. I've, I've had cops come out that could not release their hood because that thing was jammed down. I'm like, really? You've never, have you ever pulled your gun out of the holster? Well, you know, no, I don't know. 
it, but it's just stupid stuff like that to double yeah. check that I don't have something wrong with my equipment. I mean, how hard is that? So, but yeah, dude, they want to buck that all day long, but getting back to the gym thing, the dry fire. Yes, that's cool. But here's the beauty the airsoft is like I said, now you've actually got a projectile going out. So you can, you know, as well as I, we all can cheat dry fire, right? You've got to be the honest broker and go. You have to be the honest broker. You, you are the, because I mean, it's, if you're cheating yourself, you're cheating yourself. Right, mm -hmm. it, exactly. But here's the thing. Now, when you actually got a projectile going out and you've got a scorable target, now there's some tangibles versus, you know, or you, I mean, you could do something like a cert where you see a visible laser, but now you need somebody grading where, yeah, Hey, yeah. you could just shoot on this electronic target. Boom. Your scores there. What's your splits? What's your hits? You know, so I was doing stuff like that. So, uh, not this last tactical games, but the previous one, I would mm -hmm. go to my gym and wear my play carrier, my battle belt. And on me, I had an airsoft block 19. Um, but I just, what I ended up doing is I taped the, the actual mag. Mm -hmm. So there's no projectiles coming out. So, so when you, I, I kind of taped <laughs> it. So whenever I shot it, the, the, the slide were reciprocated without actually locking back. Gotcha. So just, just doing through all my, like climbing up a rope, doing mm -hmm. some, some farmer's carry, just get it and then get into like a 25 yard firing line and just a little pasty like I got back there. One of those. Yep. Um, those uh, ipsic targets, um, and then just kind of take you know take a deep breath and just try to work on that trigger trigger press. But uh, so yeah, it's things like that that I'm already thinking about incorporating and kind of like talking to these guys because I have vested interests. You know, these guys are out there, man. I feel bad for them. I really Dude. do. Horrible, Mark. I saw, I I saw a video, and you talking about that hood. It reminded me of a video I posted the other day. And it was some cop, and I think it was in Atlanta. And there was a guy that was coming at him with a knife. And the guy, one of the, the first cops shot him. He shot him like three or four times. Mm -hmm. And he got back up again. And yeah. I'll talk about that later here. Um, I was snatching that gun after a drill. But um, he shot him, and then he grabbed the knife and went to his partner. And I think put the knife in his throat and actually just, I think he sliced his throat and his partner, I mean, the, the guy that actually shot him, he had a big shot, like two shots to the head. Yeah. Um, and that's what stopped it. But I think the, the other, his partner, man, he got pretty messed up. And, and, you know, it's, I tell guys like, for some reason, students are really slow from the, from the holster. Man, but when you tell them, hey, the drill's over, they put that yep. they fast snatch that thing and, and I'm like, guys, it's completely reversed. You want to 180. Oh, the gun yeah. fast as fuck, and then put it nice and slow, like. And yeah. So yeah, but it, it, it is, it's the follow-up sight picture, man. You know, it that's is the follow-up sight picture. And and the problem is, as soon as you pull out the timer, the whistle, whatever, guys are quick to rip the shots off, and it's like, as soon as that that last shot busts, poof, and then the gun's right back here. You're like, hey, dude, check it out. You're not in the flat range. Get rid of this flat range theatrics. Yes, yeah. I can't put a real human being down there. Remove the paper. But if I'm down the other end, and this is a two-way freaking little gunfight going on here, mm -hmm. are you going to be so quick to whip that thing away? I'm not. I know. You know? And, and it's just like, and Mark, I'd, I'd love to hear your assessment on this, but it's like my cops, man, scan and assess. Okay? Yeah. And I asked the million-dollar question. Okay, you just shot old boy. Mm-hmm. Now you're going to scan and assess, but I go, Hey, what's your department policy after you've engaged an individual? And I've yet to get somebody to give me an answer because if I'm scanning and assessing again, range theatrics. And again, part of it is depending on your situation. Yes. If I'm downtown somewhere and there's a mob yeah. and I just clip the dude, yeah, I'm probably going to, you know, do a quick look around to say, Hey, here's what's up. Right. Yeah. But I'm just not going to stand flat footed because I'm on the range. I'm just going to turn my head. I'm going to do a good 360 and go, here's what's up. But it's like, what's your post-shooting procedure? Yeah. Absolutely. It, especially if this guy is armed, right? And I just shot him. Now I have potentially a loaded firearm just laying out there. And I, what are we doing, guys? And I've yet to get, but, but I don't know. But they'll yeah. sure shit, they'll sure shit do that scan. And I'm like, come on, man. Well, yeah. I, we, we, we talk about it all the time on the show. We talk about it on the range all the time. Um, when bullets are available, Dry fire is important. Yes. You know, now that the bullets aren't 
available, we try to say, hey, you can still dry fire, you can still train. As a matter of fact, you should probably dial back some, save, save that ammo, save that ammo, do a little bit more dry fire, you know, maybe go 75, 25 the other way, um, mm -hmm. which you probably should be doing anyway. But, you know, Rick always yeah. says three times a week, five minutes a day. Yeah. And you're going you're gonna to see it. And, you know, the, the snatching the weapon back and throwing it right back into whatever they're shooting, um, a carbine or, or a handgun. I see a lot of YouTube influencers, big time influencers doing the exact same thing. They're looking at their timer. They're chasing those drills that those guys are putting on YouTube to see if they can yep. get close. Now, hey, yeah. if you're having fun and you're enthusiastic and that gets you to the range, I'm all for it. But those simple things, just like we were just talking about with this, the scan and closing the distance, you know, taking the, the firearm or whatever weapon was, you know, getting that out of, the, out of play, immediately rendering aid and all those things you need to talk about um, these guys sometimes they just don't they don't even think about it and i've been i've been on the range at work it was painfully obvious that this officer and this is just one he has not he had not taken his gun out in months wow months uh, i think the holster had to be taken apart and that and, and, it, and it's wow. it's sad it's sad because you know it's not going to happen like my post I put on the other day. If you expect to do any of these things under stress and you haven't taken the time to even learn or practice without stress, it ain't going to happen. It's not going to happen. So, yeah, yeah it's, it's so sad, sad and I hate because I love these guys, man. Love these yeah. guys. We all do, you know. Here's the thing, Chris. When it comes to my LE guys, right, for my typical students, am I abrasive? I'm, I'm not. Yeah. My, my LEO guys – I do get abrasive because of the passion that goes with those guys. Yeah, because, I know. because like, hey man, you know, you're out there with the bull's eye on you. Yeah. I hope you never have to use this skill, but God forbid if you do, you burn that dude down and you get him down quick. In the same way, and uh, because I'm passionate, I want these guys to yeah. be successful. You know, what's yeah. what's better? What's what's the best phone call you can get? Hey man, that stuff you taught me saved my life. I smoked this dude, dude. That would be like. You know, yeah. like that, a field goal, you know. But, but Chris, that's why Warhawk Tactical is here. Because when I was teaching at uh, the Special Force Advanced Urban Combat Committee for 7th Group, yeah, those first group of guys that came back, did they told me, and that was the hook setter to go, all right, man. So, you know, could I have closed shop at that point, retired, and said, hey, let's get this thing going? Could have. But, you know, at yeah. that time, you know, things were going on. Go out there, get my operational rotations in, and – yeah, dude, I knew from that point the hook was set. Like you said, man, when somebody tells you that stuff you taught me saved my life, yeah, that's a that's a life game changing event right there. It, yeah. it, it is, it is, man, because you change somebody's life. You train that you have that man, that's, to, that's to a lot of pride in there, you know, because you you as, as a professional, you devote your whole all of your stuff into like Tim had to tell the guys from Florida Fish and Wildlife, like I don't know if you know, but Chris graduated, distinguished honor graduate from Ranger School. And so he's trying to give you 62 days of, like, of knowledge into, what, six hours? Yeah. Like, for not even that. I don't even know if it was, like, and so I was just trying to just give these guys everything that I kind of unzipped because I thought I, I thought I lost all that stuff. But once we started teaching it, just, Dude, like, it, it just it, came it, out, right? It was like, it was like, it we comes back. It to be. Yeah. No, it's just yeah. like out there, out there in the woods. It just, you know, yeah. it's like riding the bike. Oh, riding jump back bike. on this thing. Boom. And then next, yeah. you know, it's like doing this, doing that hand and arm signals. You haven't used in umpteen <laughs> years. All of a sudden, boom, you know, oh, yeah. it was real fun. It was real fun. You know, OC it with Rick, you know, oh, yeah. it was really fun. And just seeing how these guys were actually learning and maneuvering because these guys were, were the ones that are going to be responding to, to shitheads that run from the police on the highway and then go into the Everglades mm -hmm. and the police and the sheriff's like, I ain't going in there. Right. These guys get called up on there and they get online on a war on a wedge, they're in a wedge formation and they're out there with dogs and, and trying to find suspects though. So we had a lot of vested interest in that. And, uh, and Rick, I mean, I learned a lot from Rick on the uh, shoot house, you know, man, Rick is just the monster in the shoot house. I don't know if you ever been, I'm pretty sure you have, but you know, I, I learned a lot. I just, I just soak it all up when I'm around Rick and, you know, and guys like Tim, because I look up to those guys. You know, these, well, these guys it's, are, it's, you know, it's great that you're out there, you know, giving back. And, oh, thank you for your service, by the way. We always like to 
say thank you oh, yeah. for all you've done. You know, getting back out there and, and helping these uh, LEOs and, um, and uh, some of these younger military guys, it's great because uh, even if you get those light bulb moments, you know, where someone's been struggling with a particular skill and the next thing you know, you tweak a little something and now they're having some success, man, you're, the confidence that you're instilling in them, and, and I know Rick and I talk about it all the time, it's huge because then they're going to say, okay, I can do this. I'm going to practice. I'm going to get out there on the range and, and I'm going to help somebody else, you know, just paying it forward. So we really appreciate that. We mentioned that to, yep. to Mike, you guys are out there busy and uh, you know, Rick's doing a lot of LEO classes. So we're trying to get an LEO class, you know, going uh, up in this part of the way. And hopefully we can keep it going, but you know, again, we will deal with the ammo stuff, but we'll, we'll get it going. So thank you for continuing to do that. Yeah, man. I, I mean, again, I, I love my law enforcement officers. I back them up 100%. And I just wish they were a little bit more open-minded, you know, yeah. they're like, you know, and but I remember being a trooper, <laughs> like you couldn't tell me shit, you know, like mm -hmm. you can tell me about shooting, you civilian puke. And then you go to a USPSA match, you get smoked by like a 13 year old kid. Right. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh man. You're like, whoa. You yep. know, yeah. like, I got to relook at some things in here, you know, because <laughs> I mean, just got smoked by a 13 year old kid on a USPSA oh, yeah. match. He, but I'm a military dude, that's a dude, mm -hmm. you know, and I know how to shoot. So, <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying? Like, I wish there were a little bit more open minded. And unfortunately, we have to go through some, some scenarios like that where we got to get humble and we have to look at ourselves and be like, maybe I'm not as good as I thought I was yeah. because I've been big fish in a little pond and maybe I need to expand my horizons a little bit so but it's all growth right I mean oh, yeah. to that and it makes you a better shooter to, you know, it's, yeah so be it so it's how's it, but, um uh, how's the COVID dealing with that stuff going on for you with you and the family and and uh, how's things going up there in uh, in Baltimore things opening up so to be 100 percent I'm single so I've been married twice, divorced twice, so I'm just a free agent. Just throwing it out there. Um, <laughs> nice. Yes. Go, nice. So, so tell us where uh, where people can find you out there, Chris. <laughs> hey, you can find me at the range in Culpeper, Virginia. <laughs> oh man. Uh, no, but uh, I'm sorry. What were you? I'm, you I, I forgot the question. Mark. How's the? Uh, how are you handling the COVID, COVID up so there? For COVID. We thought we were going to get hard, hit hard, but what ended up happening, we're in the D.C. Beltway area. A lot of people that are at fluent and they have a lot of money. So they started figuring out, it's like, hey, law enforcement said that they were not going to protect us. So I have to all of a sudden, you know, be a first responder for my family. So we started Googling, you know, fire train group and green ops is obviously at the top of the list. Right. And I had, I mean, I had a boom in private lessons and building guns for people that had money, teaching them how to shoot. Um, so we actually had a boom in, we never stopped working. If anything, we, I mean, it work picked up really, really up. So we're happy to do it because, you know, we're out but there. You're, you're, you're kind of between two apples, right? You've got, yes, you live in Maryland and I don't know mm -hmm. what Maryland's rules are, but you teach in Virginia yes you know because like the problem I faced was you had certain states that said ranges were essential businesses you had yeah. some states that ranges were not essential business so obviously Virginia ranges were essential and you could well, still go train well this is a private property okay this is a private property owned by a prior marine a well, Vietnam marine sniper yep. love those and guys very very pro Second Amendment, and uh, actually, the sheriff of Culpeper, Virginia, has been on Fox News before, saying that if he has to deputize his yeah. his people, he mm -hmm. will. They will definitely deputize, but BLM and Antifa are not coming and <clears throat> start any crap in Culpeper. He's made that um, so it's that environment that allows me to thrive. And I mean, I'm a brown dude with tattoos, but. And I'm in Culpeper, Virginia, where everybody's white and like, hey, but everybody knows who Chris Alvarez is. So like yeah. Yeah, everybody when I go to the gas station, everybody's like, you know. So it's 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 not I it's a welcoming community for the gas station. Nice. Um, and so it worked for us never stopped because it was a private property. And so that's great. Uh, and so 
So, so what do you got going uh, coming up new? Um, you touched on some of the things you've got going on with, with the, uh, the gym and, and your kicking butt at uh, Green Ops. Uh, yeah. Anything new coming down the pike? So tactical games, I'll be, uh, I'll be a battle boss. So I think I'm going to step back a little bit from the competitor side of the tactical games and kind of move myself into more of a battle boss position. Um, and it just helped him out and, uh, you know, and further the sport. But I think I'm just going to take a step back because I'm hurt and yeah. I'm 23 and I don't, I don't think I need to prove myself anymore. And I definitely don't want to break myself because by breaking myself, I just kind of, you know, lost some money because I can't be out on the range and crutches mm -hmm. and stuff. So do I need it? No, but I do. Do I love the sport? Yeah. So I'm going to support Tim and, you know, try to help him out. And so I'll be doing, I'll be battle bossing in nationals in Florida. So nice. Other than that, like I said, green ops, tactical strength and conditioning. I'm going to school. I I'm almost done with my bachelor's degree in business technology administration. So after this semester, I have six more classes. So Good for you. Um, so I'm scheduled to graduate <laughs> summer of 2021. You know, That's awesome. and, and uh, just trying to get that GI bill and, you know, and hopefully mentor guys that are coming out of the army, man. And, you know, from our community that just think that they don't have any skills or they're scared, oh, you know? Dude. I'll tell yeah. you what, I, go ahead. I appreciate sure you No, it, it, uh, you're hitting the nail on the head, man, because I tell everyone getting out. It's like, hey, dude, if you've got it in you and you've got a passion, and here's the thing, it, it's not about just going into firearms and tactical community, stuff like that. I don't care if your passion is painting pictures, go be yeah. your own boss, you know? Yeah. I'm not saying I'm God's gift to be an entrepreneur. I will teach you lessons that I have learned so that you don't repeat. But I tell everyone, hey man, go go be an entrepreneur. You've yeah. got the skill, you've got the skill to do it. Now it's just a little bit of mentoring. And that's the problem is the army doesn't have it, man. Um, the boost of business class I went to was an absolute joke. I got nothing out of it except, hey, you can go to SBA and get a, a loan. Hey man, yeah. tell me about marketing. Tell me how to run social. Tell me all these things that, oh, you didn't. So um, but that's the thing, man, is tell guys, you know, two things. I always tell guys, Hey, if you can, you know, be an entrepreneur, be that because you just worked for the man for at least 20 some odd years. So why do that? And the other thing you've got to tell guys is their identity cannot be tied to their military background. Hey, have the pride, have that, all the, all that other stuff. But dude, when you retire, you've got to drop the rank. You've got to drop all these titles that you potentially had, you know? So for example, Hey, I'm Rick Hogg. Yep with Warhog Tactical. That's my identity in the civilian world. I, and, you know, but go ahead. I agree. Like, I, that's one thing that I'm like, if you look at my stuff, I'm, I don't think, people think I'm active duty, but I'm not, you know what I'm saying? It's all pictures from, or sh shit that I've done, you know, in the army um, to promote my my platform, right? My, mm -hmm. cause I have to, like, I, I talked to you, like, Chris, you gotta post, you even tell me you gotta post certain times to get the maximum amount of likes and exposure, all that stuff. So I'm thinking about it as like that. So that when I step away from green ops and I have my own, I already have a following. I don't have to start mm -hmm. from scratch. So I'm trying to build that platform. Yeah. And, and you just, you just have to think too. It's like, Hey, are you going to stay in the Virginia area? Are you going to pick up and try to go mobile? You know what? There's a, a bunch of things you got to kind of figure out on the backside. Yeah. What you're going to do. Um, you know, but that's all, it's all easy. It's all can do. It, the biggest thing is just, you know, kind of connecting the dots for lack of better terms or making connections Right. to go, cool. Hey, I know this guy, can he help or not help? Or can you get a partnership or, Hey, sure. what range can you use here or there or whatever? Um, yeah, yeah, I'm dude. not, I'm not big, I'm not big bucks like you, Rick, like you're traveling around the country, like hopefully. Hey. Hey, Sarge, I'm on a fixed budget. I'm, <laughs> I'm retired. I am a service disabled veteran owned small business. I eat. Oh, Rick's broke. You know, my, my back looks like a politician <laughs> all the way up to my neck, you know? Um, but yeah, no, yeah, I mean, but you're doing it, you know what I'm saying? Like you're, so I, I don't think I'm, I'm trying to build and mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like to me, I, I take that seriously. I want to build and I want to build good foundation, you know, and I want to, sure. uh, um, take it seriously. So again, you know, Mike, I, I, you know, I, I gotta give kudos to Mike 
because Mike was the one that asked me, and I just kind of fell into all of this, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I don't know if you saw my post today, but I got shot on in my yep. face with the sim round. So I was doing some contracting work. I actually got assault. I got shot by an assaulter from Soundproof. I was at MS-13 H HVI, and they were going after me, and I was shooting at them with an AK, and, it is, and I just peeked in my forehead, and he shot me right in the head. And... Uh, and I felt it. And then they were like flashing the, the flashlight. They're like, hey, hey, you know, index, index, index. They're like, side of the flashlight. They're like, hey, man, you want to see a doctor or a medic? And I'm like, I think I do. And then it was like that. Have you seen the movie um, with Ben Stiller when he like zips his zipper into his ball? Oh, yeah. What's that, what's that movie? Something called? about Mary. Something about yeah. Mary. And they were like, hey. Check this out. Check this out. That's how it was. And I'm like, okay, that's probably not a good thing when everybody's calling and like, dude, check this shit up. Like, and it's like so, 50 people looking at my forehead at like at two o'clock in the morning in a, in a kill house. So, so how did you get the beans? How'd you get the beans above the Frank? That's all I got to ask. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh. That's the movie. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So I got shot in there. Um, and so after that, that made me realize like, Hey man, you're retired, you're 100%, there's no fucking reason why you should be exposed to some shit like that where you might lose your eyeball or better yet be brain dead because I don't even know how far, I mean, it would have gone through my eyeball, go to my brain, so I don't know. Like, is that really worth it? And so my girlfriend at the time, she she's active duty, she's a lieutenant colonel now. She's like, you're gonna fucking quit and you're gonna go to school. And you're gonna get, so after that, I ended up getting my associate degree in like, Two semesters got man got high honors out there, um, and then immediately moved into uh, University of Maryland, Baltimore County. I wanted to initially go to go uh, University of Maryland because it was a pretty reputable school, but the work the, 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 it just didn't work. The timing didn't work out, and anyways, this place was closer to me anyways. But that's where I'm getting my degree at, and you know, and I'm just trying to work on my education so that you know, so that when this breaks down, I can still use this right here. If you had one piece of advice to give, you know, these mill guys getting out and uh, LEOs that want to get out and do something different, what would be that uh, one piece of advice you would give them? Oof, man, for the, uh, I, I would say for the military, I, I can't, I don't know exactly what the LEOs go through when they get out, um, but for the military guys, hey guys, you guys have skills, like you guys, especially medics, you guys have tremendous skills, like you Everybody's got some sort of skill set that the civilian world is looking after. Just find what your passion is and go after that. I would say that's that's my biggest advice. Uh, for guys that don't have a degree, use your GI Bill and go get your degree. You get your degree, you still get a stipend. So you're getting paid to go to school to go get a degree. It's it's It'd be crazy not to go get a degree. Is every student that most of the students that I know, they're probably like in their mid twenties, and guess what? They're working three or four jobs to pay their their tuition. And here I am, I'm getting paid to go to school. So take advantage of it, guys. You advance yourself, you know, you get educated, and you just that augmented with your military performance and, and your military history experience, and you just extremely, you know, dangerous candidate for whatever job you want to go get, you know, it's scary. It really is. I don't know how it was for you guys, but when I got out, man, I was, I was a shit show. Like I had to go see counseling and <laughs> like, I missed it. I missed it a lot, you know? And it's one thing if you're like, Rick <laughs> lives in the Bragg area. So, you know, if you really want to, you can go down to the unit or you can go to Charlie Mike's, you'll see, you go to Southern Pines, you go somewhere on Bragg or, somewhere favorable and you're going to bump into somebody from from the teams but but here's my thing chris right my whole focus you know that whole build up prior to getting out and yes i was totally off the mark was warhog tactical right i got i got out thinking yeah dude i'm at the 80 percent having this business good dude i was more like at the 20 percent because i didn't get kind of that mentoring that i needed for the entrepreneur side gotcha. prior to but you know, that was the thing for me was there was that drive of, Hey, here was my end state. Yep. You know, 
and yes, we stayed in the Fayetteville area, you know, one, because my kids were here, two, because I'm centrally located on the East Coast, easy out, you know, on and off 95. Okay. From a business standpoint, it just, it made sense. Made sense. Um, but no, I, I think that's the, you know, so I would just say, you know, if you think about it, if you really had the end state, like, hey, transitioning, because yeah, it's a big change. And yeah. I think whether you're military or law enforcement, guys get out and they're like, what's next? Yes. And, and that's, if you're in that limbo state, I think that's where the dramas come in. So one of the units that I served in was the uh, airborne test directorate. I don't know if you're, you know, we talked mm -hmm. about that, but I would get guys that were from third and seventh group. They were starting majors and I was the op sergeant and they were begging me for jobs. And I'm like, oh my God, is this, is this going to be me? And like, and I was in E7 and I was like, yes, sir, major. Yes, sir, major. You know, and I'm like, remember talking, I'm like, I'll, I'll look in to see what I can do, like to get you hired as a civilian. Yeah. As a civilian, because they're like, holy shit, what am I going to do after I get out of the army? Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, and so that scared the crap out of me, man, because I'm like, man, if this is our major calling E7 just to get, you know, a job, get a test worker as a civilian, and he's kind of begging me. That's but it boils, so it boils down to what we talked about earlier, man. It's that identity, right? Now, yeah, exactly. That identity. It's crucial. I, I'm all about teaching, you know, my mill guys. And granted, that's all come to a squish with all this rubbish, but that's yeah. here or there. Hopefully it'll yeah. pick up next year. Yeah. But the, but the point being is, you know, these star majors reaching out. Why are they reaching out? Because they're still stuck in that military wagon. Hey, I'm star major so-and-so. I, I don't care, man. You've got a name. Yeah. You know, so plug your name and it's okay to step away from the military. You know, it's not the end all be all, but if you're so tied where you've got to go right from active duty and then as a retiree, right back in, you know, that same kind of job you were doing before. Yeah. I, I, I just, you know, I think that's where some problems wind up down the road. But yeah, just, I agree. I, I 100% agree because again, like when I present myself, I try to distance myself. I'm like, hey, that was cool. I did that, right? That was mm -hmm. cool. I checked those blocks and that's who I was, but that's not who I am today. So yeah. I try to like, yesterday was yesterday, today is today. What did you mm -hmm. do today? And so I try to live that way and not harp on that other individual that was in the army. And then sure. those things I want to transition into, hey, I'm Chris Alvarez, you know? I got a buddy of mine from third group. He's a, he's a company commander. And he was talking and he was like, and he mentioned my name and one of the team guys like, oh, do you mean Chris Howard's the shooter? And I'm like, and he's texting me. He's like, he's like, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> they think you're a shit. Like, like, I guess I know who Chris Alvarez is. I know, cause I know him for like 10 years. So he's a, he was a fine list of guy. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah. He but was there's nothing. But there's nothing wrong with plugging your military stuff in as well. It's not, no, it's, I, I'm not, but don't live, like, don't completely yeah. live, live off that. Sure. And that's where I have a, you know, to me, like, everybody's different. I am just look at myself and I'm like, you know, I just do what I feel is comfortable for me, you know, what's true for me as an individual. So I don't mm -hmm. need to, like, I mean, I, I throw a bunch of pictures and videos and stuff from back in the day, but. Um, sure. Um, because people like that stuff, you know, the consumer. It's your, yeah, no, it's fine. It's your history. It's my history. And, you know, you're absolutely my history. But I try to focus more on stuff that I'm doing now because I think I've gotten way better now than, than I was in the Army as far as shooting-wise and instructor because now that's all I've been doing for, like, the mm -hmm. last couple of years. So, you know, my shooting's gone exponentially through the roof because one of my, my teammate, he's, uh, I don't know if you guys know, but his name is Josh Shaw. And uh, he's he's my Green Ops teammate. He's a uh, Grandmaster for USPSA Carry Optics. And this is who I hang out with every, I mean, every time I go to range, this is who I hang out with. We sometimes yeah. do virtual drive by. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like, well, FaceTime, he's like, all right, Chris, let's go through the, you know. And so, you know, drive firing with him and teaching me his little intricacies and, you know, mm -hmm. and just going out there to doing USPSA matches just completely elevated my, my shooting game and I feel a lot more comfortable as an instructor, you know, teaching some more advanced stuff. So. Yeah. Well, your content's out, out of sight, man. You've got a lot of good stuff out there and your following is growing and there's no, yeah. 
no question it's because of the content you put out and the good good material uh, for folks to take back to the range and help out so yeah it's not a surprise you're doing a great job on the social media stuff well appreciate it because i try i try quite a bit you know sometimes like i don't know if these guys are going to consume this and you know you there's some self-doubt you know every time you kind of post something out there i don't know for you but for me a little bit and then then i just bump into somebody at the range that recognized me from instagram and like hey man i love your like you know and so that gives me a little bit of more drive and and, and confidence into pushing out more more stuff and you know, every time I go to a range, there's always an opportunity to go, you know, get a video and put some content out there because oh, yeah. I think the students and the consumers just want to see shooters do, you know, shooter things. Yeah, you know? sure. So. so, Chris, how can people, uh, if they want to get in touch with you or check out your content, give us all your, kind of your uh, your social platforms? All right. So, I'm on uh, Instagram, which is the my primary social media platform, and my handler name is Chris Alvarez and it's A L V A R E Z five eight zero. That's on Instagram and on Facebook. Um, Chris Alvarez, just just Chris Alvarez, um, and it's gonna be me. You're gonna see who it's because the profile picture is gonna be some, <laughs> some stud like in, a, in an action movie uh, running with a rifle. On it, like, uh, no shirt, slick back hair. That's right. No right shit. That. Yeah. I, I'm known for that. I don't know. If you, I'm surprised you guys haven't brought that up. You know, <laughs> in the shirtless pictures. Oh yeah. 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 But uh, yeah, I like to I like to run around shirtless if I can. No shame nice. in that. I don't no. care. No. Hey, what, what's wrong with that, man? Mm -hmm. I know. That's what Nothing. I'm saying. I'm comfortable. I'm sorry that I make you feel uncomfortable because I'm awesome. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I mean, I can't wait. Next time we're together, we'll, we'll both go shirtless. I'll be like, hey. let's do it, Rick. Let's do it, man. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Awesome, brother. All right. Well, we appreciate you coming on, man. I know yeah. you got that uh, killer commute and you got tied up in traffic. Still made it back and really appreciate you being on the show, buddy. No, I really appreciate just being on the show. I really, uh, I thought that, you know, the last podcast with Mike Green, it was phenomenal. And, uh, and so some, I don't get all your podcasts, but I do cast some of them. So, you know, and you're, you know, I, you're, you know, paratrooper bro from the 82nd. I think you guys were, you're a 325? Oh, bite your tongue, bite your tongue. Oh, that's right. Three, hey, whoa, whoa, I forgot. <laughs> we were all in the same brigade. You guys were in 3505. I was in no. 1505. No, we were in 1505. Yeah. Oh, 15. so you were, that's right. So, holy shit. Yeah. Yeah. Now the question. Hang on. Now the question of the hour is, when did you get there? Um, I got there in 2005. Wow. <laughs> long, long gone. Yeah. So, so, wait, 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 wait. So I got to ask you this, Chris. You were probably in those new fancy barracks, weren't you? No, I mean, I was married by then, so, but. Okay, so, yeah, so when you first. Family, so actually when I got there, we were still in our dens. We were still in our dens. And okay, on, on, on Gala Street. Yeah, on Gala Street. Yeah, okay. by the, by the uh, they had a like that. The remember they had the quarter the the track there. There was a track in the middle yeah, yeah. of the Oh yeah, yeah. And then you do so, manifest and you do like free jump by the uh, whatever. Yeah, the yeah by Gala, yeah by Gala Street. So check it out. Me and Mark, I think it was last year, buddy. We went back, or Mark came down here. We tried to find Third Brigade. Epic fail. I, I don't know where they're at, man. I, I can tell you where exactly where they're at. They're where are they on, at? Um, they're on Butner. So they're on Butner Road. What? Yeah. Like, so like by Old Butner Division? Long Street. Ah, okay. So, so he's saying by Old big, Division? There's a big parachute rigger yeah. tower, the 82nd rigger shed. Yep. Yep. It's right across from it. They actually, mm. the headquarters is right next to the, uh, the, the rigger shed. Yeah, we didn't. So they're actually, they're actually on Butner then. Yeah. So on the, the Iraq deployment there, we lost about 20 dudes from one Panther and uh, which is right now, and we even lost a Sergeant Major and uh, we're doing the chaplain ended up becoming, leaving the, uh, the 82nd and became, eventually became the, the 75th Ranger Regimental Chaplain. His name is Chaplain Phil Kramer and uh, he's actually um, organized a jump dedicated to the star major that was lost in that battalion. I'm actually doing a free fall out there, Great. To jump at some stuff. But uh, what, when, what, what, what company you guys were in? HHC. Oh, uh, scouts. Mortars. 
More, okay, more fucking mortars. You guys are mortars. Yeah, buddy. Charlie's. Boom. You know it, man. <laughs> We're a little bit smarter than your average Bravo. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we could do some math. <laughs> that damn math you guys were the 120s because you guys had the big guns. Uh, uh, 81. 81 right? the battalion. Yeah. Yeah, but they didn't. 120s weren't out then. Oh, okay. Well, 60s. Yeah. We had 60s, and and usually the battalions have 120s. 80, 80, I'm sorry. Well, yeah. yeah, we had the 80, 81s. Yeah. 81s. 81s. That's yeah. correct. That is correct. Yeah. 81s. Yeah, we had to jump that big ass base plate. Oh yeah. Oh, I jumped the base plate. It's not. Mm -hmm. It was definitely no. not. Uh, it's not a. Uh, it's not a fun, fun feeling. It's not a fun time. No. No, no. it's not. It's not. It's not. Yeah. But. Uh, oh man. Like so, it's kind of ironic. Like now we're all retired, and all of us are like for one panther. That's pretty cold. That's actually pretty fucking awesome. You know. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Oh uh, yeah. So. Right, hey, good man. luck with the rehab, buddy. Can't wait to see you back out there in the games and stuff. But uh, thanks again for coming on. Really appreciate it. Hey, appreciate it, Mark. Thank you. All right, buddy. Uh, see you, right, pal.